Good morning, everyone. Hope you guys are doing well. It's mid-December and uh, it is cold out here in Arizona. It's down into the 30s. I don't know, it might drop down into the 20s today, but uh, it's, uh, it's stinking cold for us. So uh, anyway, today we're doing a brand new project. This one's gonna be pretty quick. I've done already done some of the carving off camera, but I'm gonna give you some other videos that you can go watch that I've done that uh, kind of uh, shows you exactly what I did here. So babe, if you wanna pan down, we'll take a look. This is actually for a friend of mine. Uh, so these are uh, two inch and inch and a half outset letters, Clarendon font. Uh, and I've done lots of videos showing how to do these letters. So the videos you want to go watch are number 596, number 548, number 163, and number 416. And it'll show you basically how I do the outset letters, profile bit, the background done with a 90 degree bit, but those videos will show you that. Now I've also done something on here that's not uh, really the norm of what we've done before and that's the edge, the, the outside edge. So I notched the corners with a hole saw and uh, just put a real deep chamfer on that and the video you want to go watch for that I have written down back here on my cheat sheet, number 111, and that's where my dad showed how to notch those corners, a couple different ways actually. Uh, that one is a fun video for me to watch. Anyway, so what I am gonna do on camera is I'm gonna do this sewing machine. I've got my carving liner bit in, and I'm gonna do this uh, sewing machine here and get that done. I've got it set at about an eighth of an inch. So if you'll bear with me, I'll swing this thing around. And uh, oh, that, by the way, this is a uh, one by 12 cedar and it's actually, I think it is a full, oh no, it's 11 and a half, 11 and a quarter wide by 32 inches long and it's a full one inch thick. Uh, actually, this was a piece given to me by, uh, I think it was Henry uh, Satterfield gave me this piece when we were down in, uh, in Texas. Beautiful, beautiful board. Anyway, um, I'm excited about getting going on this and uh, it carved really nice up here. There's some really uh, nice um, knots up there, which were a little difficult, but uh, this cedar is so soft, it's very nice. And these lines are showing up pretty good, especially with my cheaters on. So again, I've got my uh, carving liner in, set at an eighth of an inch or thereabouts. Let's, uh, let's get going with this, here we go.
Okay, there, uh, there's our sewing machine. Man, this stuff cuts like butter. It just cuts so nice. Very little chip out. Uh, you can see if you go back and watch a lot of this stuff, I wasn't at a full eighth of an inch deep, um, but uh, most of the big lines I dropped all the way down. Most of this stuff I kind of held the base up a little bit and uh, just went as deep as I needed to um, in order to get that, get that image. So um, from here, we are going to uh, spray this thing black. I, a lot of times I would go around and make a heavier line around this, but I don't think I'm going to because I think that would kind of detract from it. Uh, there are some lines here that wouldn't make sense. And what I mean, let me, let me preface that. It wouldn't make sense this isn't like a normal image that is a silhouette that I could go all the way around. And that, and what I mean by that is this line right here is supposed to be a thread. So if I did a fat line all the way around, it would be an issue when I came to this because then, okay, what do I do with this? I'd have to make a fat line around that and then the thread it just would be it just wouldn't work well so um, in this particular instance I'm not going to do a fat line around everything and I've gone deep enough um, that I know I'm not going to sand anything out that uh, that is going to be a problem so I am going to spray this thing black uh, probably use my ink or my primer off camera uh, and then when I come back, it'll be all black and we'll do some sanding on it and we'll reveal what it looks like. Be right back. All right, guys, we are ready to sand. So I went ahead and um, I had a couple more fills that I needed to do with the Starbond, but got that all done. And um, then I sprayed it uh, and now we're going to sand it off, see what it looks like. Here we go. So I have got my disc sander and I've got an 80 on here. Sometimes I'll use a 60, but this stuff is so soft that I think that would just be a little too aggressive. So I've got my 80 and then I'm going to finish it up with my random orbital and a 120. Here we go. Okay, in case you guys haven't seen the process before, I take off most everything, 90 to 95% of the black I take off with the more aggressive disc. And the disc grind grinder just by itself, the disc sander is much more aggressive. So now um, I'm just going to go back and smooth it up with the random orbital and a 120, which is um, should give us a much smoother finish. Here we go.
right, let's see what it looks like. there it is pretty happy with that so we're going to come back and we'll get a finish on this thing we'll be right back all right folks i'm going to go ahead and put a finish all the way around this is going to be an interior sign so i'm just using this stuff even though this stuff does have uv resistance but this is what i normally put on my signs for indoor um, indoor purposes so the way I normally do it is I do the back first. Sometimes I'll, you know, when I'm filming, I'll already have the back done off camera. But in this particular instance, I want to show you my whole process. So I'll do the back first, then I'll flip it over. And you can see I have it, I have some tack strip down there to hold it up off of the off of my Lazy Susan and then I'll do the edge all the way around. These Lazy Susans by the way are pretty handy if you're doing much of this. Now I'll bring it around again. Stand it up. Now I'm just gonna lean it against that Lazy Susan. We'll put the final coat on there. Oh, not the final coat, the first coat. I'll end up putting probably four or five coats of this all together. Man, I love the way that cedar comes alive when you put a finish on it. So thank you again to Henry Satterfield for donating this board. This is one, that, one of several that he gave us when we were in, uh, in Texas. So there it is, boys and girls. I'm going to, like I say, I'm going to put more coats on here, probably three or four coats anyway, and uh, then it will be done. So I uh, hope this was helpful for you. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I always love cutting this cedar. It's, um, it's a lot of fun to cut. It, uh, it has its challenges when there's a lot of knots like this but uh, the end result is definitely worth it. So if you have any questions, please email me directly, eric at makeawoodsign.com. Hope you guys are gearing up for a great Christmas. If you need supplies, there's the website. And uh, I guess that's about it. Uh, hope you guys uh, are, uh, have a great rest of your week and uh, we will see you on the next video. Have a great one, guys. We love you. Bye.